Every time I go on a radio show that's beamed into, uh, into Iran, and the best one, by the way, is uh, Radio Israel. Uh, every time I go on a radio show that's beamed into, uh, into Iran, and the best one, by the way, is uh, Radio Israel. Every time I go on a radio show that's beamed into, uh, into Iran, and the best one, by the way, is uh, Radio Israel. Uh, absolute core reason behind the development of nuclear weapons today in the world. They're not doing this for deterrence, although I believe in the past they have, uh, because they, they believe that by using these weapons, they will go to paradise. <laughs> Because they, they believe that by using these weapons, they will go to paradise. <laughs> do ordinary Iranians believe this? Some of them do. <laughs> now let me tell you what really keeps me up at night. It's not Iran's nuclear weapons program. It's Iran's focus on what we call an EMP weapon. Yes. Yep. Electromagnetic weapons. And it will take our country back to the year 1820. 1820. <laughs> And you're going to be eating whatever you can hunt, fish, grow, or catch, and defend, and bring home from walking distance of your house. And that's it. <laughs> A descent into savagery, gangs, you know, gang warfare. Assaults, you know, Satanism, I mean, all kinds of things, you know, just the horrors, the dregs of the human soul which come out uh, when there is no controlling authority. Uh, it is not something that I would like to go through. I don't think I would like my children to go So, this is what the Iranians are working on. Every time I go on a radio show that's beamed into, uh, into Iran, and the best one, by the way, is uh, Radio Israel. But I'd like to talk uh, about Iran's ties to Al-Qaeda uh, and Iran's t direct ties, material ties, to the 9-11 plot, because I think it's something you haven't heard an awful lot about. Uh, June Dela, just to, a little bit of background, Seymour Hirsch of The New Yorker, The London Daily Telegraph, and Brian Ross of ABC News all agree that they're on the CIA payroll. This is the $400 million in the Iran Regime Change Act approved under, under Bush. Right, this guy had been meeting with 
And some say the NATO Secretary General, Yap de Hoop Sheffer, met this terrorist, certainly NATO generals in Afghanistan, so they operate as an arm of NATO strategy. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. And it was President Reagan in partnership with the Congress, um, led by Democrats, who said, you know what, sounds like a pretty good idea. Let's deal with the ISI and the Pakistani military, and let's go recruit these Mujahideen, and let's great, let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places, importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam. In Syria, everybody knows that Al-Qaeda is the CIA. Let's go recruit these Mujahideen, and let's great, let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places, importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam. Our problem is not even with an Iran armed with nuclear weapons. Our problem is the regime itself. You and I and everybody that you know, we will become Muslims or we, we will become dead. That is Islamic justice. And in fact, there's a concept in Islam which is very important. And I know that uh, Rabbi uh, Jonathan uh, has talked about this with, Kurt, with uh, Garrick Wilders, a concept called fitna. Perhaps to Westerners, used to the scenes of conflict between Jews and Muslims in Palestine, the concept of Jews living happily in a Muslim state is a strange one. But here in Iran, it doesn't appear unusual. We will become Muslims or we, we will become dead. We have to delegitimize the Islamic Republic uh, of Iran regime in every possible venue. And how come those of you who live in the south, southern suburbs of Tehran, you can't have clean water to drink? You can't get a bus to go to work. You know, but I'm all in favor of sanctions. We, we must pursue sanctions as far as we possibly can, but we should have no illusions that sanctions will change the behavior of this regime. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Both Israel and Saudi Arabia are much more dangerous enemies to the United States than the Iranians are. So when you look at these kind of things, you have to ask, who would benefit from the war? The Israelis and the Saudis would love to see our money and our young men and women being killed to fight their enemies in Iran. Are you